Hello, welcome to the Square Based Show. In this exciting episode, me, Rob, and your co host, Val of the Stars, are going to be talking about the five things that we're most excited about from Warhammer the Old World as it has just come out. Very exciting. Very exciting. Whoa! Yeah, very exciting. It's excited so, to be here. How are you? Holy crap, Rob. The rules are out. <laughs> the game is here. Can you believe it? It was about a, about a year. It's been about a year, right? Like I, uh, we didn't even go back and look, but like here we are. It's we been a while. It. Us. It's been a while. We many people laughed at me when I said at the beginning. I said, "Hey, buddies, everyone in the world, I'm going to start talking about this. This is going to be a big deal." And people were like, "No way, no way." And I was like, "Well, yeah, yes way. We don't know what it's going to look like, and it's been some ups and downs over this period of time." <laughs> it's been it's been a lot of ups and downs. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but I'd say we're starting on a high. I think today we're starting on the high. Yeah, I think uh, initially when games like this launch, I think there's a lot of like, there's a lot of, you know, what's going on. And we're going to try and cover those in loads more videos. What's going on? How do you play? How are we going to build armies? What are those armies like? There's so much to talk about. Tactics. And, yes. And, you know, lore and a bunch of stuff that we're going to cover on the show. But we're going to kick off today, and I think it's a great uh -huh. suggestion by you, uh, just with the top five things that we're most excited about. And I think one of the things I'm looking forward to, this isn't one of my top five, though. I'm not letting it go. Oh, this is, a, this is, a, this is, this is an addition. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm really... Is it a I, yeah, honorable addendum. mention? Yeah, honorable mention. I'm excited to see what everyone else is excited about. Like, I want to know in the comments, if you are watching this back, I want to know exactly what it is you're most looking forward to. Like, what's... You know, are you going to build an army? Um, are you immediately going to dive into the law? Have you already started kitbashing units? You know, what is it? Are you going to just pull through the rule book? You're going to pull through the rules. Um, uh, sorry, the the law. What are you most excited about? Because it was really hard. So we're going to do our top five each. We haven't told each other what our top five favorite things or things we're most looking forward to are. It's like when you, it's like when you, if you ever queued to go to a con, like, you know, like a convention, or if you ever queued to be like a gig, any of those things, and then they swing the door open and you're like, okay, now I'm in. You're excited. Be like, there's a lot to do. Like, so to do. there's so much to do. So I don't even like, it's a playground. They've opened the doors to the playground and everyone gets to like, you know, go on the rides they're most excited about first, which is really, really fun. Um, and it's not to say, and I think it's also worth noting that the, the, the hype, you know, the five things we're excited about, doesn't mean that there's not like a whole bunch of conversations we're going to have about like, you know, what does tournament structure look like you know sure. how you know what do event packs look like are there some problems like you know um and uh, we've kind of talked about those already and you definitely have been uh thinking through some of those uh like a lot which i think has been really interesting like what you know what kind of stuff uh might make it so that games are less enjoyable and less fun and what more can enjoyable more fun yeah so what can you know what can the community can do about that you know and, and yeah. what's that situation uh but let's we'll leave those for other shows we'll just start yes. big uh, yeah, so we'll I, think, I think this is like a, a day like this, embargo release day, you're probably seeing tons of videos from all sorts of different content creators, maybe going a little deeper than we're going to go right off the top. Um, but it's a day for excitement. Like there's going to be lots of time to play this game and get into the nitty gritty and figure out what, you know, maybe some stuff that we don't love. We'll talk about that too. But today, let's try Let's try and be positive, Rob. What do you think? We're just going to bring our joy to the table on this one. I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to try, like okay. I'm famously... Famously, they do say honesty without kindness, brutality. So no brutality from me today. Just some honesty with some kindness. Uh, oh, that's, uh, I know, right? That's good. good. You should get a memento tattoo of that somewhere. <laughs> I use it a lot now. Uh, which is, <laughs> I heard it and I was like, this is good. Okay, so we don't know what eat fi our favorite, our five favorite things are. So we might have the same one, which is fun. Okay. Would you like me to kick? Would you like to kick off? Sorry, with your like uh, one of your favorite you know what, things. Rob, yeah. This whole time, I have to say that that. That you know, you do such an immaculate job of hosting and driving the conversation, and I'm a selfish, ungenerous lover. And so I would like to perhaps open up this this huge day by asking you a question, Rob. What's okay. your fifth favorite thing about Warhammer the Old World right now? Okay. All right, I'll start with number five. And I I think this is also a little bit of a shot across the bow at some of the YouTube commenters as well. Okay. I think this is this is this is me making a statement. Um, right. is I really like the setting. It's number okay. five. I really like the setting. 
It's very relatable. There are so many things that I will say about the setting over the next few years, and I've already said over the past few years, you know, it's just Europe. Uh, like, it, fantasy itself has inherently got some problems. You know, yes. uh, we've talked about how square bast we are, um, and that, you know, I would like to see some of those problems, like, approached or, like, navigated by, by the writers. Sure. But ultimately, the setting is something that it's it's so nice to be able to return to because while I have moved on to play Age of Sigmar and I love it and I like the setting there too, all haters, you'd stop hating. Like, yeah. I also really like this setting because while it is really reductive, oh, what, the dwarves have grudges and they're drunk and they're miners. I'm like, yeah, like that's cool. Yeah. I, do you know what I mean? I want that. Yes. It was in World of Warcraft. It was in all of the fantasy books I read growing up, um, yes. you know, or even even nowadays. So I want all of that. And, and, and actually, I'm excited about exploring where the story will also go, I guess, as a kind of like, you know, 1.1 dash. Uh, yeah. is a kind of a little thing. So that would be my number five, the setting. I think there's loads of positives. I think there's loads of really interesting stuff. Uh, one of my key, like one of my most favorite characters in all of Wargaming, Lord Croak, come, yeah. like, it, my love for him and playing Lizard Men as a whole arrived from reading the Battle Tome or the Codex, whatever it was, uh, where right. he just, he was just so pissed that people had killed him, he just didn't die. Like, there was his, that was, he was so petty. And I was like, oh my God, me. <laughs> so that's my number one that's my that's my fifth favorite thing the setting you know what look at this it's like the dating game we're doing well so far because mine is very similar but it's okay. just warhammer's back warhammer is back okay i took warhammer was a place where uh so like i was a big 40k guy for a very very long time a lot of numbers had so much fun playing tournaments and doing all kinds of stuff but i got tired of the grind and uh also the pandemic happened and i and and the place where i sort of hung out because I couldn't play games with my friends anymore, was, you know, Warhammer Total War. And playing games with my friends, I did that. We, we played a lot of Vermintide together, actually. And suddenly I was immersed in this setting that you just described that is still got that grimdark vibe, still got that dankness, still got that, that, that uh, eerie, uh, foreboding uh, tone to it. But also there's just so much more range, I feel, maybe emotionally within it, because there's also just humans, like, trying to farm. And there's like beastmen living in the forest, you know, and like that is eminently more relatable when they go when they go out, they go to a tavern, they drink beer, you know, like it's it's cool. You can see yourself in the place and you can even maybe imagine that there are like areas that you could carve out like a life, like, you know, a historical version of life. But nonetheless, something that is a lot more relatable. And then on top of oh, that, I wrote that down much. as well. I'd like to be clear. Like, I think that I agree with you 100 percent. The relatability of the setting and Warhammer itself 40k like they every time you're like maybe there's some nice places in 40k the, and people will scream at you the law guys will scream at you they'll be like no everything is eat and I'm like human beings can't exist inside that setting yeah. like, this we're is, still this, humans yeah we're still, still humans. like it would just yeah. not work it would fall apart eventually so relatable uh, is super important yes and uh, and there are you know there's better and worse guys but I think that there are like the the evil guys are uh, decidedly evil, and the good guys are flawed. I think might be one way to say it, rather than being, um, you know, some version of a you know transhuman fascist. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so anyway, not to rag on 40k, by the way, because 40k is still awesome in a lot of its own ways. Um, I just also got tired of the, the the grind of that game when I came back, and it was ninth edition, and I don't know it just wasn't it wasn't doing it for me and it was just so awesome to explore you know the old world or the uh the world of legend because i did like to expand beyond just the borders of the old world um and now it's back because i've i've always described it. it's been like exploring an abandoned amusement park i found all these fun things these cool factions and i would talk to people who had been to that amusement park like they had gone and rode those rides and they loved those rides and oh shit man i wish that was back and now it's back we can play with our friends it's really really sweet and there's a chance i think for a redemption arc for this game because i think it was kind of scapegoated for you know like maybe what wasn't going so great for games workshop when it was ended um and uh and now it's sort of back from the dead and like the game itself the experience of like these long battle lines of big you know staunch formations and then imagining like fireballs like shooting out of wizards and dragons charging into flanks and like just the stuff that you um, somehow doesn't for me like work as well as much as I love total war 
it's more vivid for me on the tabletop because like my imagine imagination is taking me there. Mm-hmm. And um, and I really love how the models do the work. So Warhammer is back, um, you know, eight long years uh, of it being gone. And now it's here. And that's just so much fun. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a good one. I think like it being back is is it's also impactful as well because you know tied in with you know the setting returning i guess like i guess because that's what i'm really saying i'm saying that mm-hmm. i loved the setting i had to leave it it literally was destroyed also yeah like and so it's like that is the end of the story now being able to revisit and you know kind of do a what if if that's the situation we're in like or you know like an audit timeline or wherever we are it's fun um because there was so much more story there to tell mm-hmm. that they just never explored and so being able to open that up now is 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 great. Yes. Yeah, great. Wonderful. Great. Okay, uh, should I do number four? Um, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, so my fourth uh, favorite thing uh, about Old World returning uh, is the way, so this is a rules thing. Okay. Um, it's going to be a rules. Most of my stuff will probably be rules. Is that you can upgrade units. So okay. for people, so for people who aren't aware, like you, like this is the first thing I'm checking out about old world. So in old world, I can have a character. Let's call, let's say, a Bretonian lord, okay, and he's a hero, and he could be, uh, you know, he could be a, a basic paladin, and you know, he could be a duke. Uh, Duke's the top, right? Or is there baron the top? Baron's the top. Duke, baron, paladin. Yeah. So. Baron at the top, so and they all cost different points. If I'm going to have a Baron at the top, it's on different points. But then I'm like, okay, cool, I've got a Baron. But then I can give him a lance, or I can give him a flail. And you're like, okay, normal stuff. Like, what's he armed with? Then what type of armor he's got? Then what yeah. mount is he driving around on? You know, what's he? What's he? What's he stood on? Is he a horse? Is he going to be a hippogriff? I'm like, okay, I'm that's. Gonna, I'm going to challenge you right now, Rob. Yeah. Is 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 a duke on a hippogriff really what you're excited about? That's yeah, not like, what you're excited. That's yeah. not what you're talking to me about. You're talking. You talk to me about a chaos lord. Yeah, a chaos dragon. Yeah, that's what I'm actually excited about. Yeah, like that's what you're really excited about. Let's get fired up about that. Well, I'm basically excited about putting everyone on a dragon. If I'm honest. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but like, no. Beyond that, though, like if I if I don't go to the ridiculous, because the ridiculous is fun. Like upgrading yes. units in this way is fun. Um, because then again, just for, again, if you're new and you don't really know, and then beyond that. Uh, what I can also do is I can then give them magic items. And if I'm playing Bretonians, I could do knightly vows. And there's like two really awesome things that come from that journey from being able to do that. And also with other units, you know, I can give them heavy armor and a shield or I can give them not. But I guess it's like three or four bonuses from this. Number one, my ability to like, you know, uh, sculpt those models or like 3D print those models or, or you know, buy those models and, and clip them out together and decide this guy's getting a lance and not a flail is awesome. And I love that. Um, there's so much opportunity for hobby. I'm actually going to talk about that later. But the, the ability to narratively create something uh, because the rules for this game are very crunchy there's a lot of them mm-hmm. and that's actually a point i didn't make. i'll talk about it later um <laughs> but you you get to add a lot of rules and so i get to really narratively create a character which then yeah. the rules represent those, that narrative creation which is super exciting and then yeah. in addition as like a you know a tournament gamer or like a gamer gamer i could build units that do fun stuff even and you and me talked about this earlier even if I'm not building the best Chaos Lord on Chaos Dragon that I can, if I want to build the most hilarious... my One of my best experiences ever playing Warhammer is against my friend Nathan playing Warhammer Fantasy about 8th edition. He used to play, I think it was a goblin, but it might be an orc, and he used to take okay. the wizarding hat, right? Yes. And the wizarding hat made him such stupid. Such a chaotic choice. Such, yes. a, such an insanely chaotic choice. He would, he would have a special hat. He had an orc with a hat modeled on, and it yes. was and he, sometimes it worked out brilliant, and sometimes it worked out terribly, right? Because it, you had like a kind of a bonus, but also a massive negative. Yes. And, but the point was, it was amazing. And this is a game, especially if I'm playing with my friends at yeah. you know the venue that I have, or if I'm meeting up with my friends to play, I want to build characters and units that make fun interactions happen. And you can do that. And that's been pretty grossly missing from several of the other games that they produce. So that's mm-hmm. that's that's my number four. There was a lot to talk about, but like upgrading units, I think, is gonna be just wild fun. Wild fun. Uh yeah. And speaking of wizarding hat, because we can talk about these things all of a, all of a second. It's back. It used to give you uh it used to give you stuff, doesn't matter. Uh, but it does the exact same thing and it's way cheaper. It's 45 points now. So so Nathan, 
you can you can have your your goblin with a wizarding hat taking lords of magic from things orcs should have no business taking magic from <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and having a, a very good time with them. Um, yeah, upgrading units is something I think that, like, again, like I take for granted because I've been living in, you know, this game for a while and this is the way it's always been. So it's so cool that, like, I don't know, you get to enjoy that, that crunchiness, the excitement of, of, you know, building your better bear. They're also, uh, they're also, that, they're, it's also, it's also more elegantly designed than Warhammer Fantasy Ball Eight. There's, there, there, there seems to be a lot more options. There's a lot more like variety, um, you know. Uh, and I think that that's actually really, really fun. And I think you're going to see people get really weird. And I've, I advocate for this a lot. Get weird, right? Warhammer is hard. So you need yes. to get weird with it, right? That's you right. need to you need to make it. You need to be like, yeah, he's definitely going to have the flaming sword. He's going to have this magical armor, and I'm going to just always send him at the units that are flammable. That's his plan. Five times out of five, you're never going to play a flammable unit in your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I, but, it's, it's, but flammable isn't such a big deal now. But no. you know, like it's getting into the details. But that's and that's also one of the cool things is like getting weird is is about too like getting really deep into this because there's a lot of stuff. That's similar but different, and I think both of us are going to have lots of points later on that that relate to maybe more rules related things. But uh, yeah, so upgrading units um, is mine. What's yours? What's right. your for number four? So, so second is actually again. I mean, uh, on on the dating game, maybe we're we're not quite as matched on this, but it's pretty close. My second one is remixes, uh, and by that I mean like uh, there's been some degree of of uh, of consternation. Some people are super excited about the fact that. You know, this is launching mostly with old models mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, with uh, some, some certain variations. But what they didn't really have clearly was the either the desire or the you know ability to come to the table with like whole new ranges and really make a splash. Um, but what they do come to the table with is new rules. And I think the thing that makes those rules uh, make me have, I think in a previous episode, uh, Rob described it as a mind boner, um, <laughs> is the fact that... <laughs> That in a lot of places, they because they don't have, again, new tools to work with, they are doing things like remixing existing units so, or existing model kits. Uh, a really good example of this uh, might be in the, uh, in the Tomb Kings uh, Arcane Journal, which is what an army book is now called. Um, uh, you have things like Tomb Guard Chariots. So you're, you have a chariot now with, with Tomb Guard Riders on top of it. Um, you have um, the opportunity to use uh, skeleton cohorts, which is a throwback to um, you know Warhammer Ancient Battles um, and other historical games, obviously, which is mixed units of uh, skeleton archers and spearmen uh, that then have some uh, additional benefits. Um, and in all of these cases, you have a little box at the end of the rules that gives you an idea of how you might recreate this on 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 the tabletop. Um, in the Arcane Journal for for Bretonia. Uh, you have um, uh, cool units like I think they're the brigands, um, which are basically just, you know, uh, dudes who are in the border princes, carry pistols, get into fights at the tavern. Um, and, you know, like you can make you can make up just like this. Just a good old vagabond. Of, some vagabond. You can make a rowdy mob of desert pirates, basically. And <laughs> that's cool. And then and then the remixing goes beyond that, because I think when you see the uh, the grand army list that we have. Um, those are kind of bog standard what you came to expect. Th those are the armies that, um, and the unit entries for the armies that we saw at the end of, of the last time we saw Warhammer Fantasy in 8th edition. And um, so we get that game back. So that's kind of like table stakes. So like, okay, guys, here, you can start with this. Enjoy yourselves. But then as these arcane journals come out, they're going to start to uh, explore the setting through Armies of Infamy, which is another way to remix existing tropes. Um, so with, um, you know, we heard about the Bretonians, um, uh, previously, but in, 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 you know, if you look at the tomb Kings, you have, uh, an army of infamy that's focused on, on Cetra and, and the guys he comes with, you have one that's focused on the mortuary, uh, um, cults. Um, and then with the Bretonians, you have, um, you know, questing, uh, sorry, an errantry crusade, uh, army list that for example, allows you to bring in empire um empire knights and um allows you to only be mounted so a full army of cavalry um and all of these things basically take um elements that i've already seen i've already played with i'm excited to play with the things i already had but now i've got a reason to do something new like completely new and i love that they're doing that with rules and they're also in those rules baking in encouraging us to go out and just and, and build them like find ways to represent these things find things ways to make these things and I think that's a lot of fun. 
I could agree with you more. I think I, I didn't write that down as a as a as the expansion. So, but the the alternate ways to play armies is fantastic, especially remixing in with like mercenaries and allies as well. Like, there's some good opportunity. Like, you know, there are some fears as well that maybe, especially with allies, is going to be a problem. Like in game construction, but like. I think I agree with you. Like the way that you can, especially because what they're really doing is they're giving you a, another army instead of releasing yeah. Border Princes the book. They're like, here's yeah. Border Princes, you know, like, and that's really really fun. And also, dare I hope, there's also like a little like you know nod towards the future. Not that this is something I'm conscious of, but like a yeah. nod towards the future. Just like okay, we might see an expansion book that is not just dedicated to. Tomb Kings or Orcs and Goblins or Dwarfs. It might sure. just be dedicated to here's a campaign and there was an uneasy alliance between two very different armies and then you might be able right. to play that as a singular kind of like concept. And that's yes. cool. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I think uh, yeah, it just provides, like they have a core and now, and they've immediately also right out the gate, they're showing us that they're how they're going to develop that core, which is good. Um, and, uh, yeah, really excited to see where it takes us because the other thing is that I find kind of cool. And we've kind of talked about this before is like, it's called Warhammer, the old world. It's in the world of legend, the greater planet. Um, but they have really focused the setting and so far anyway, the, the two armies of infamy have really drawn us in to the, the focused area of the setting, the, the border princes area of the old world. And also those remixes give us reason to have, Maybe some, you know, interlopers involved in the setting that maybe they, you know, you wonder why they were there. Um, so anyway, uh, it's 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 a, it's it's really cool, and I'd love to see where that goes with it. And it's always fun to have new rules to play with the, you know, either new army that you've built or play the army that you already have in a different way. Uh, so that's really cool. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a great point. Great point. Uh, okay. All right, so okay. uh, number three for mine is a right. personal one. I've got, I'm going to okay. get personal. Is a, is a toned down huh? uh, but more elegant magic phases. And ah. and for me, again, uh, as someone who, for, for me, the old world went away and returned, is a return of spell laws, uh, especially universal spell laws, and then obviously like unique spell laws. So uh, again, if you're like you're not conscious, um, in the past uh, in Warhammer Fantasy Battle Eighth Edition, especially magic was a little bit too much, and a little mm -hmm. bit too much is maybe underselling quite its level of impact. <laughs> um, and then it did kind of not worry me, but when we did see the magic stuff, I was a bit like, oh, okay, maybe mag magicians won't be that big a deal in the game. Um, you know, and looking at it, it does feel like magic is going to be pretty key. There's, you know, yeah. there's a really good conversation. It, you know, in you can have zero to one. Well, uh, in some army lists, you can have zero to one level four wizard at a thousand points. And if we do play two thousand points, there'll be two potentially. But if we play Probably. nineteen ninety nine, there'll be there'll be one. one. <laughs> um, uh, which is a big big difference, right? But so magic used to be a problem. Magic now is much faster, which is amazing. Yeah. And initially, I was a bit like, oh, okay. You, they, they cast much more consistently. If you have a level four wizard and you have a, like, uh, you know, even if, even if you've got two magic missiles, you're casting all four spells at the chance you get to cast them every turn. You're yeah. also unbinding your opponent every turn as well, like if you're in range. And that means your wizards actually, like you become very much more conscious of where your wizard is. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. there he is again, doing the spell. There he is again, doing the spell. There he is again, doing the spell. Like, And that's really fun. And they actually, they're not more impactful because that would be impossible because they were game breaking before. But yes. they're more... Uh, they're more yeah influential yeah they're, they're, they're definitely a part of the process which yes. is fun and then i just love universal spell laws because again i think that they're very relatable like you know having a spell law with these specific spells you know i i go across from my opponent and they're like i'm playing with demonology i'm like i understand what that is that's perfect i don't need to individually yeah. ask what your stuff is i do you know or if they're i'm using it's the knowable spell. it's knowable it's, yeah. it's knowable exactly yeah. Uh, which is which is I think uh, cool, uh, but also it kind of same with magical items. I guess it grounds 
the the game like it feels yes. more viscerally real because you're yeah. like oh there's only this many spells from the law of whatever and then there's only that is a magic item of particular repute i know where that comes from um mm -hmm. so yeah i like i like that the magic is more toned down but i think it's going to be more influ not more influential because that's not possible but it's going to be more integrated and better that's a really good way to put it i i, I think so I think there's a lot of consternation. Is this game going to be like 40 k fine? And by that, I think like the idea of like stratagems and having these like special cards that you could like throw in there and like buff units and do special unique things um, with, with its own resource management system, like that, that idea of stratagems, um, which is cool because you kind of want to be able to do cool uh, combinations of things and put different powers on different units. That makes a uh, game kind of crunchy and fun. With the magic that we have now, before it was, like, like you said, often game-breaking, but also magic was all about literally the process of, of casting spells. That was what magic was about, really. The outcome, if you let your opponent, or if your opponent, opponent was able to cast, was devastating. And, uh, and, but like really, there wasn't a lot of magic. I, despite the fact that it was like super game-breaking and like you could do huge things, you actually weren't casting that many spells. Yeah, you were doing to get one like, big spell. You were doing one or two big which ones. Which would maybe define the whole game. Yes, yeah. and, and, and in, in ways that weren't interactive or interesting. But now you have, and I love that word that you use, integration. And magic is integrated in the fabric of the game, where magic is a, a means to provide shooting attacks, buff units, move units, um, uh, provide attacks in combat. And so it's, it's actually integrated into every um, uh, phase of the game. And on top of that... Um, uh, you know, like they're, they're, it's it's useful magic. You know what I mean? So, like to me, this is, magic is where sort of the that stratagem feel comes from. And the, again, unlike that, there's interactivity to it because depending on how you you maneuver your casters, and I can't wait to actually get this on the table to see how it feels. Um, but the, depending on how you move your casters around, um, you know, you're getting that counterplay element. And and there's items. There's lots of different ways and uh, character abilities. Um, to to uh, you know interact with spells. For example, the prophetess with the very nice feet, um, uh, <laughs> uh, Dushao. Um, she has uh, she has an ability uh, that uh, when she dispels, if she rolls a double on her dispel, uh, the casting wizard uh, uh, takes a wound. <laughs> so she's she's a devastating anti magic uh, you know type of uh, type of character, and there's others too, and there's other items that make casting harder. Um, you know, uh, the way resistance works. Anyway, magic is just, ironically, although it is not as crunchy a system and that my, mini game is gone, it is so much more a part of the game. Yeah, it's, it's, sort of weird. It, it's absolutely more a part of a game. I think that's absolutely the right way to describe it. Like, it, it, before it was, it was just all or nothing and now it is... It is, a, you know, much more front and center. Like, but some like it can't be more front and center. But yeah, there is a way to describe I, it. It is though. Like that, it is though. Like it feels. It feels. You're like definitely. It's be you're actually... definitely. You're definitely doing more spells. Like, yes. though, and it's not busy work either. It's not like you're just doing nothing. You are yeah. like doing some pretty, you know, like a, a teleport or a reposition. Um, it's going to be super, super impactful, like minus one toughness, minus one weapon skill. There's so many, there's so many re like creating panic tests. Like so many of these things are going to be very impactful in the game. Uh, yes. And I also like that the, the spell casting is pretty linear. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like... Because it's, it's about much, the effect, right? You're not, yeah. you're not so taught, you're not so tied up on... The, the, like you're, you're not, you know, you're eating the meal. You're not like obsessing over cooking the dinner. And that's kind of, I guess, maybe the difference between the two. Mm, that's um, good. And like, so, you know, where, 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 where you use your magic is what matters. Not like the incredibly onerous process of getting off that nuke, nuke spell that changes the entire game and yeah. sucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I like that one. Your, your, your number three. My number three. I think you'll, you'll feel the need to also expand on this one. Cause my number three. Uh, as we all know, as war gamers, the most important phase of the game is movement. And um, I didn't realize how little rules were a part of pretty much any other game I've ever played of Warhammer. Uh, how little actual rules there were around movement. Um, like there, 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 you know, maybe you have guys who can go further. Maybe you guys who go twice. Um, you know, there, there's and there just really wasn't a lot of like cool stuff that you could do. With your movement in this one, um, movement is um, I would say opens up opportunity for a, a lot of interesting game states, a lot of interesting board positioning and play, um, because you have um, 
uh, you have uh, from from like closed order, which is just tra basically a traditional uh, movement block. They, they they can march. They can they can do their normal things. Uh, but a lot of times those guys have drilled, which means that before they move, they're allowed to redress their ranks, which would look a lot like a classic reform to most eighth edition players. Um, so you could before you charge, just completely change your frontage, for example, depending on what you're what you're dealing with, which is super cool. And so those guys are more like your tight together marching blocks like Roman legionary types, your your warriors of chaos. Um, and then you have open order who are who move with a lot more uh, nimbleness. They don't uh, take penalties um, uh, for difficult terrain. And at the end of their move, as long as they make a normal move, um, they can do a full pivot. So essentially uh, like a, a wheel up to 90 degrees to reposition. So like they have a lot of, um, you know, like a lot of options that way. They look like a closed order formation. That's kind of weird, but you know, there's no, there's nothing that you would be able to look at a unit and be like, oh, that's open order. That's closed order. You have to kind of know. I don't know. Maybe some tokens or something to 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 help us in the beginnings. Um, but uh, it, you know, like th those units move in very different ways and have very different uh, uh, benefits in what they can do and it, with their movement. And then you have skirmishers, and skirmishers are just like what you might be used to in playing in AOS or 40k. You have like these units that can move freely around the table in different formations. Incredibly useful for screening. They have uh, they're not constrained by their line of arc. It's it's um, I don't know. It's it's really cool. Uh, I think what skirmishers can do in the game, and I'm really fascinated to see what people do with with their skirmishers because skirmishers can now skirmish. Skirmishers used to be sort of a historically our vanguard unit. They're in front of your main force. They're supposed to cause problems harass things, get in the way, and now they're kind of opened up through their movement rules to do that. And then finally, movement that's maybe underrated is um, how falling back works. So movement when you're getting the hell out of the way, when you're running away. Um, we've talked a lot of, about fallback in good order and pushback as results from combat. And all, actually being forced to fall back in good order is also a mechanic that um, you know features off of some magical spells um, and uh, you know item abilities and things like that. So it's 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 a it's a rule that's used to again shift the game state and make these things potentially a lot more dynamic. Can't wait to get get actually playing. Um, but something I wanted to bring up, bring about about open order is there's a concern that this was going to make infantry blocks really 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 tough to budge because it's harder to break if you roll if you roll below your unmodified leadership at the end of a, a combat. Um, you just fall back in good order, which means you just fall back. And then you turn around and you're ready. You basically probably get charged again or shot or whatever. But nonetheless, they don't just get chased down and run off the table. Um, and, however, you can, unlike an eighth edition, where if you had what was called steadfast, which was a, a, a unit that was big enough to um, never have to test on a modified leadership role to break from combat, that meant that those bricks were sticky. They would just stay there. It was very hard to move them. Um, how, and it seemed like a, a no-brainer if you just if you allowed, uh, say, flanking troops or, or rear charging troops to take away that benefit, that makes a lot of sense. That feels dynamic. And that also makes your flanks really important. Well, now, if you have a, a unit in your flank that's of a certain size and girthiness, um, you are disrupted. So you lose benefits to your formation, which means that you're positioning, protecting flanks, making sure that someone can't just come in and hit you from the side or the rear is really important. Where, whereas that that game of positioning wasn't necessarily present previously. And it is such a big part of what we imagine in our heads when we think of like these big, you know, running battles between, you know, crazy dudes with swords. Um, so movement, I think, has an opportunity to really bring this game alive. And all of the different uh, potentialities, is that a word? I don't know, feel, feel really, really exciting to me. Absolutely so, not a yeah, word. Movement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, movement's good. Movement is like the uh, the secret source. Like skill expression through oh, movement yeah. is uh, is obviously something. And and movement is always gearing towards like enacting a plan. Your you need unit A. Unit A doesn't want to fight unit B. It wants to fight unit C because that's what unit A is good at fighting. And then positioning mm -hmm. is about achieving that aim or like, you know, flank charging and achieving that aim or whatever the situation might be. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of opportunity there. I would say, though, you know, in the Warhammer hard is hard statement, definitely for this game, more than any, this is probably going to be where this becomes even this is going to become very, very challenging for people. And I think that's really good because um, one of the things I didn't write down was I just liked uh, how many rules there are now. 
Um, mm. I, like if you give me current 40k with no rules, basically, uh, I know some mm -hmm. people might laugh at that, uh, but there are none. And then even the most basic core unit having a ton of rules and then how they interact with other units also being a ton of rules. I think that's good. And that gives a lot of opportunity for skill expression, as does movement. Like, that's awesome. It's exactly what you want. But that is where it's going to get crazy crunchy. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to you're gonna do a charge, there'll be a bit of terrain in the way, and then you'll all be like, everyone calm down. We need to raid two pages to work out what's going to happen here. Um, the, be <laughs> the, beginning, the beginning of this, the beginning of this, Guys, but don't book three hours for your first game, okay? Seven. That's definitely not. You might want to book a weekend, seven hours, a good afternoon, solid afternoon, and like, don't go into it. Basically, get as much stuff on the table as you can. I think would probably that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be like, what do I? What did I? Uh, this was my favorite new edition smell. Mm -hmm. Is like, what haven't I played with at all? Because it's just never worth taking, you know? Because I'm that guy. So like, I probably want to build an army with all models that I, I rarely ever used before, and if then I, I do, just going to. Yeah. And I just want to put that on the table and just start learning rules uh, and rolling dice. I would say that because you you want to you want to you want to constant you want to be working out the core rules before you really even care about your units. So I would say if you get the opportunity to repeat units, I'm, assu I'm I assuming think, they're like us, Rob, and they've read the rules at least a little bit. Like well, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think okay. I think like you know this is <laughs> this is going to be a pitch. Like, and this is so early reading. 200 pages of rules that's a several day job right like i think that's an important part to say so you know i would say that like you just try to repeat some units don't just be like i'll have five of these and i'll have one cannon and i'll have to be two of those i'll be like okay your character has got at least two magic items maybe some sort of other magical upgrade yeah and like you Rob, need to yeah. the moral of the story was just get some stuff on the table and start learning what all those different things do because yeah, exactly. otherwise it's it's they're very abstracted as they're presented to you mm. so usrs are good it's a double-edged sword because yes it makes things something simpler but it also means you got to reference back a billion times and then there's all the stuff that aren't usrs they're just the rules so Yes, like this, it's it's very onerous to keep all that straightforward. I think when people put it in, well, all I was trying to say is like, if you put it into three dimensional space, and you just start trying to see how those mechanics work and solving those problems as you go, that's ultimately I don't know. That's how I learn. Maybe different for others, but that's that that, that helps to crystallize things for me. Yeah, yeah, that's how I learn too. I think that works really well. Although then that does that is just slow, like because yeah. you're like we need to look up a lot. So that's important. A lot of printouts yeah. is my my <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> Yes, uh, we, we will definitely have game aids coming. That yeah. will be something that we will be producing. Uh, you know, when when we're on wider release, like hundred percent. Like this game, you're going to need some help, and you can you can come to us for a helping hand. Yeah, and we'll we'll have some cheat sheets for you. Yeah, we'll try to have as many as we can, uh, which will be useful for people because they'll also be useful for us, which is great. Yes, uh, I, I need yeah. them. <laughs> but I just want to I just want to resonate with your point. Movement is is key in war games. Having an ele or, or like an elegant or complex, whichever you want, um, like both can be true. Uh, like movement phase, so that there's lots going on, can be daunting, but also can be a great opportunity to do the perfect thing. I, you know, I yeah. set up that flank charge. I, you know, I did flee so that you were left in no man's land, so I could do the counter charge. Like that's great. So there's some there's some real good opportunities there, which I think is really thrilling as well. I quite like also the rules, like impetuous and stuff, like uh, that force you to charge. I quite like that. Like taking you out of position in the wrong time is uh, yikes. Is what I'm going to say. Yeah, and that's uh, and that's I think a lot of the interesting interaction in the off turn. So like when it's not your turn is the fact that. Your stuff's going to move in ways that you don't want them to, like whether that's the whether that's falling back or, um, you know, or I guess in your turn would be impetuous. But like there is some degree of not full control, which you may have had in previous versions because there just wasn't a lot of detail around this. So anyway, yeah, yeah. super cool. Okay, uh, my number two, two. Uh, number two is creative hobby unit design. Uh, no, oh, yeah. I haven't just repeated this again. It's kind of what you talked about earlier. So, um, yeah. you know, I didn't want to just like, I, I do want to mirror the point, but uh, but mine's actually from a modeling perspective versus from mm -hmm. a rules perspective. So yes, if I'm able to put a bunch of Tomb Guard on top of a chariot, then that is a new unit I can kitbash, which has never existed before, which is, which is very cool. And similarly, uh, like taking Bretonians, for instance, like being able to take a bombard, well, obviously there's no bombard available. So I could kitbash a bombard, 
I could buy a Bombard. Uh, I could 3D print a Bombard. Uh, that's really fun as well. And then for some mm -hmm. of the older kits, being able to like revitalize those, especially through 3D printing, but you know, whatever that might be, being like, <laughs> there is a lot of, they have, and there are just several units that just don't have models available, available to them. You know, they've mm -hmm. got rules, they've got base sizes, so we know what they are, they just don't exist. And so this gives me an opportunity to flex creatively, even if that creativity is just finding another designer, yeah. finding another sculptor, like, you know, even along those lines, that's fun because then I can be like, oh my God, that's what I could do this and that and mix those together. And I guess it kind of ties in with what you said about, sure, I could have a unit of, um, you know, if we're talking about border princes, I could have a unit of just dudes with spears, but these could like, I could just, I could find some 3D prints of some true vagabonds, some yeah. true, some true villains. Yeah. Some rabble. Yeah, some, broken, exactly. Broken beer bottles only. <laughs> Pistol, let's go. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, so there's a lot of creativity available to me f because of either kit bashes or because they've, they've like you said, they've expanded the, the what I can do. And yes. because of that, that's really exciting because again, there's nothing that gives me like a, a hobby boner more than being able to do those things. And that's cool. And also I think one of the utter strengths of Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy specifically, but I guess all of the Warhammer projects is that <laughs> wait, like I, you, you know, I've been playing a lot of Shatterpoint, but Luke Skywalker is Luke Skywalker. Like, you know, yeah. they give you a cup, they give you Ahsoka as like a fully fledged Ahsoka, you give the Padawan Ahsoka, but it's still Ahsoka. But when I make right. my Duke, my Duke can be my Duke. He's your yeah, duke. He's my duke, yep. uh, which is cool. My dwarf lord is my dwarf lord. And yes. I get to write the story for that and create that. And they've given me more opportunity to do that and then more opportunity to create hobby and minis for that. And that is one of the cornerstones of my hobby. Uh, and so that being available now is really excellent. So I think that's my number two. I think that, uh, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Really echoes. And it's enabled by that sort of unlocking in the rules too a little bit yeah. some of it's going to be desperation i suspect uh even though these these models are coming back uh whatever versions exist um i suspect they're going to be hard to come by but we'll see make sure you're in queue but so like being creative I, that's not necessarily a downside I, I like to say like one of my things to say recently in a lot of these comments especially around the model stuff is like games workshop is in fact the only company that makes warhammer they are not the only company that makes models Mm. And they don't have them. They they do have a monopoly on Warhammer. If you want to play Warhammer, only place you can get those rules. Only place you can you can get the the the, the type of that type of content because it's really good and awesome. But there are other models out there, and they also can be really good and awesome. So I think this feels like permission to just go create cool stuff and like make them fight cool fantasy battles. It's like exa that's like, everything that's I want. exactly what I mean. Like reading through uh, the expanded books and all of those, like they should be hobby boners that are kicking off left, right and center. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, like that, that should be what's happening. And this is just the, like literally the proto release. So I'm so excited to see what happens. Like when you get the Dwarven version of this or the Orcs and Goblins version of this, I'm like, what the hell is that going to look like? You know, yeah. and then and then there's the stuff between the lines. They, you know, they've, they haven't even done like, you know, you know, uh, a shipwrecked group of Bretonian knights off the shores of Lustria. You know, yeah. like, like there's there's so much opportunity um, yeah. in the future. Your errantry crusade could be going to Lustria. You know, go go raid some temples, man. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Let's do it. Exactly. So, yes. I, yeah, for me, for me, I think that they've and also kind of huge of them, right? Like your point about they like because this is something that's been stripped out of the other games. Mm -hmm. You don't have a model, you don't have a rule. In this, they're like, here is, you know, and for 40K as an example, not to rag on it, but they're like, your guys are blue, your guys are red, you do have different backstory, that's your backstory, or, you know, make your own chapter, make your own legion, or whatever. And that's cool, They've, there's another version of them doing this, but there's no like, here's a unit that doesn't exist, go make your own thing. In this, there definitely is, and that's yes. cool. That's, yes. that's, again, pretty wild. Yes. Uh, wholeheartedly agree with that one. Um, okay, so I kind of feel like I have kind of a a, a tie for this. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for my oh, number, number two. two. I'm actually gonna reverse them based on how I've, I've written them. I've cho this is a quick re ranking. Re ranking. But you actually you actually cheated and you stole this. Not even with one of your actual ones. And oh. it's crunch. So, oh. Okay. So so just so you know, I'm gonna have to try and be psychic and figure out what your top choice is and steal it <laughs> at the end of this but crunch we're gonna uh, let you do two and then one 
We're going to give you the double chance. No, we're doing it. No, no, this is an AOS, man. I don't need. I'm not. We're not double turning. Yeah, here. double turn me at the end. Our viewers, <laughs> going to scare off our viewers. They can't handle that. Come on, come on, man. That would Trigger. Be That's true. Um, it's all right. No, no, no. It's fine. I was. It, it, but anyway, crunch. I, I for me, it, which is really funny because, like, I you know, pr as a person, as a human being, I actually do have a lot of trouble with what they call executive uh, functions. So the ability to, for example, hold. Uh, one idea in your head and work on another thing um, is actually very difficult for me. Like um, um, being able to, for USRs are actually, I'm discovering really, really hard for me because it's hard for me to look it up and remember what it is in the context of the unit. Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm trying to say here is Warhammer is really, really hard for me. It is hard for everybody, I'm sure, but for me, it's particularly hard. And what's super messed up is that the more rules there are, I think this is also part of me as a person, and it is part of the ADHD, the more possibilities there are, the more, um, the more different combinations of things actually happening and being represented on the tabletop are there. So, and that to me is just so much fun. Like, I love the idea of there being detail uh, in the mechanics around um, how things are meant to happen on the table and different contexts have specific rules. It can go too far, and I think, Probably, critically speaking, um, there are things in this game that probably are a little too crunchy, um, but that's okay. I think I think we'll 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 learn all of that stuff in time, and we'll be able to to deal with it. But just the amount of possibilities, the detail, and the fact that when you play a game, how how like the 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 narrative of that game, and even if it's just a match play pickup game, which you know, like it'll just it just becomes more vivid, you know, like because there are so many more turning points, so many more so many more things that trigger. Uh, spells that get off, um, you know, interactions between different formations, cool flank charges, you know, whatever it is, um, it's it, and also comprised of units that you've really customized and and made so they hang together and interact together. They're your they're your dudes, you know, like all of that stuff makes me really really excited. And um, crunch, um, I, I like I, it's been a while since actually since I it's, it's been as long as since I've read through Warmer Fantasy that I've really hung on every you know page as i as i read through them just thinking of all the cool different interactions and things that can happen mm -hmm. and you know what's really good um what might just be fun um all of those things um like for example hellstorm hellstorm uh, rocket battery never used it once in eighth had some had some brutal crunch in eighth had some brutal rules and in, in this game uh you get to fire you get to fire uh d3 uh you know, small templates and they just scatter full so that's a lot of templates hitting uh, whatever the heck you want. You can just park it behind a church. Well, specifically not whatever you want. Just or everything but what you want, probably. <laughs> hey, hey, don't, don't put that voodoo on me, Ricky Bobby. Okay, my Hellstorm, that is, that is a special cruise missile. Um, but, you know, like, it's just, to me, that, that it has a lot of rules. It takes some effort to learn how to use that thing. Um, but uh, I think ultimately that's so much fun. And, like, just see, imagining that thing parked behind a fortified manor, just harassing the enemy blindly, maybe, um, or just <laughs> maybe scaring them a little bit with explosions. Um, okay, you know, yeah. That's something I look forward to. And the rules that support that is awesome. And yeah, and, and also on top of that, like I've been saying this for a while, basically since we saw our first unit card, we actually didn't know more than that. And um, just the fact that every unit has rules. Like there's no just... There's no just a, a guy lot of in rules. this game. A there's lot no, of there's, rules. Every unit is brought to life with a lot of rules. And uh, Rob's uh, alluded to that being a double-edged sword. I think in time, though, the, 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 the units will just have so much more personality that comes from that crunch. But you gotta, it, 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 it will take effort to get to the place where you can look at them and, and really feel and understand their function. Um, we just don't speak the language yet. We got a lot of language to learn. Yeah, I, I think that's why uh, you know the statement that I think some people will make is that um, the 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 game uh, as it's constructed is definitely you know designed for I don't uh, some sort of mythical creature that somehow uh, both like just uh, occasionally play once a month or every two months but has time for a two hundred page deep dive of rules uh, at for, least two hundred and fifty pages yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and then and and um, I definitely think there'll be some people watching who like two hundred fifty page rules Rob that is as really off putting and like and and I can kind of agree. I can kind of agree. I do think that like some other games, some modern games have done a good job of trying to 
elegantly produce some like that additional crunch. But I definitely am excited for more rules and more crunch rather than it being sparse. I I much prefer personality, uh, like and unsurprising, you know, I've got Val as a friend. I much prefer v- v- personality, which is right in your face, uh, <laughs> versus <laughs> versus a dull, uh, you know, and kind of like lifeless husk of a of a of a rule set. And well, go on. If I could just if I could just feed off of that for one hot minute, yeah, please. It's, it's I think in in uh, ninth edition forty k specifically. Again, it's a game I know, and I don't know. Maybe you have an example like this in AOS. What started to happen was that you had a bland unit card. And then, and then essentially you would get faction rules layered on top, mm. and then you might get stratagem rules layered on top. I think that means that, like, ultimately, though, like, although you might have a nice ice cream sundae on top of all of that, like, at the, at the heart of it, it's still vanilla ice cream. Yes. Whereas, whereas at this, you have each, each, each unit is actually starts with a different flavor, and then you can add different things to it. I guess vanilla is a flavor. But... <laughs> um, you know, you, you know what not. I mean. Like it's 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 the actual units themselves, without anything else, any other accoutrements, any of the other ways you can customize them or, or make them different. Uh, they they already come to the table very specific and unique entities, and I think that's that's kind of what I, why I really like how this is designed. And by the way, guys, six of the sorry seven of of the nine factions are just free. They're just free. You get to have those rules. And then yeah, the, that and is a bonus. That is an addendum <laughs> bonus, right? That is an addendum. Like, yeah. And 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 the other nine factions are two books. You get two two books. It's not it's not nine books. It's two mm. books. It might get to be nine books eventually. But like you don't really need them. Like the actual game is quite um quite uh attainable. Like uh you could you could just pick it all up, um, which is fantastic. And hard to say for something like you know, 40k with how probably 30 factions. I don't know what are you up to 26 in AOS, something like that. 22. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Whoopsie. Anyway, I mean, still, it's still, no, it, it, yeah, no, <laughs> I agree. I agree. And there's, there's like a, there's some disparity as well, right? Like one of the things about like a game that did or was fully fleshed out previously that is returning is that most of the rosters off like orcs and goblins is kind of unique in that it's got a ton of units. Yeah. Um, you know, but like most of the rosters are, are of a similar size. You know, Chaos Dwarfs mm-hmm. are obviously smaller, um, you know, but like uh, the rosters are fairly big and you would hope to see some more expansion into those rosters in the future as well. Like you've talked about, probably all the new units, all the m- new minis we're going to see over the course of the year will just be we'll net new yep. units versus anything else. So yeah, I agree with you. But like the, the language for writing those rules, I, I, to, to your original point, more rules is, in my opinion, better. Like, especially if they're curtailed a little bit. You know, if the framework, and it's kind of like, not my issue with Necromunda, I think that's a different beast. It's a different beast, so it's different. But when it's, yeah, we've got a lot of rules, but they don't, who knows if they work? Like, you know, roll a four up, get on with it. This is very much like, here's the rules. We've tried really hard. There might be some fringe case interactions which we need to establish in the future, but generally, we've written these out, and yep. we've written them out so that flammable is meant to interact with flaming attacks. We wrote mm-hmm. both of those special rules so they would interact with each other. And you're like, mm-hmm. okay, great. That's good, because then, you know, like, this is an intended consequence. And I think that's really good. And, I, and also, like, right. evocative, right? Like, when you put, like, sorry, something I wanted to add, like, what you were saying about adding flavor on. I've got a block of dudes. Yeah, and I, 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 or do that, whoever. Um, and I've got a bunch there of people. There are some examples. There are yeah. a handful of, there are some. Yeah. There are some, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I, I've got a, a block, but then I add one character. And then that character's yeah. bringing like magic res with them, bringing hatred with them. Who knows what they're bringing? Then if they're a wizard, now I'm like, right, now they're doing this, now they're doing that. And that's fun. And that's adding a lot of, that's stacking a lot of flavor on top of each other. So, mm-hmm. and, and my friend, um, uh, my friend, uh, did say that it, you're actually adding a lot of narrative on it. Yeah. like, And I actually quite like that because I, and to me, rules and narrative are the same thing. So, you know, you're adding hatred, you know, re-rolling, uh, but you're... Just off brigands. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're <laughs> adding a story. Yeah, that's cool. I think so. So more rules is better. I agree. Couldn't agree with you more. Nice. Okay, Rob, here we go. No, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm roll. double turning you. I want to hit your one. Like I want to do it. This is please let me please let me give you the floor for number one for you. 
for number one. Yeah, I usually like I usually like the the, the walk off home run myself. So there's no <laughs> okay. rebuttal. All right, okay. uh, but my number one. You want to know my number one, Rob? Yeah. I think we accidentally already said it in that last little interlude there. But it's a complete game. Actually, I totally did accidentally say this while we were talking. But uh, I think my number one. This is something frustrates the hell out of me when when we see the 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 reboots. Um, and I think this gets back to something I said on a previous show about how. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to uh, be, I, I want to like it. I don't want to be felt like I'm coerced into liking a unit or a new toy that comes out or something like that. I want to want it, right? Mm -hmm. I don't I, like, I, I don't want to feel like I have to get it. And that's, I feel like where things got with 40K. And, I, and, and, and that was one of the things that really bummed me out about it is that because it was so driven by this unit does X and X is powerful, you got to get this unit. It's not exactly like that, but it started to feel that way, especially as an orc player at the specific time that I decided to be bitter about it. <laughs> um, so, so what it's I love about time. this uh, is is that, like, unlike in when I've seen uh, other relaunches of the game, that when you get again that vanilla set of armies, and you may not even get all of them. Looking at Horus Heresy here um, at 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 launch, this is legitimately like all sixteen factions. Uh, fully fleshed out. Yes, actually, I'll confirm here. Like uh, as of right now, from what we know, like it's you're missing some items um, from like Forge World, uh, and and there are definitely models that were not included in the Grand Armies uh, that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Not saying those don't come later. I don't know, um, but uh, you know, like you're getting 16 fully fledged factions that you can go out and play, and no one's left out in the cold. Um, like the, the non-core armies are, yeah, they don't, they, they're they not going to get the arcane journals. You can be sure to that in this edition, but like, it doesn't matter. They're still, they're still completely viable. They, they still interact with all of the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're still going to be fun to use. We've been using, <laughs> we've been using the books we've got for at least eight years. Uh, that's since it ended. Actually, it started, so 13 years. Uh, if you're a Bretonian, you've been using the same rules since 2004, I think I got corrected the last time. Almost 20 years, you've been using the literal same rule set, mm. probably if you if you enjoy Bretonians. And so everyone right now is starting from a uh, a similar place. Obviously, everyone's not the same level of good. We're going to figure out all that fun detail later. But the fact that it's complete and we get to go just head first into it, um, I've never seen anything like this come out of Games Workshop ever. And, uh, and it's really unique. And I hope it proves that this is a model that you can actually do. You just release quality rules for the stuff that exists, and then as uh, and we'll see how the adventure goes as as the game unfolds. We'll see these arcane journals and maybe campaign books and who knows what else add to that, and maybe they add a bit of something for everybody or just a couple of factions at a time. But I think that's just such a brilliant model. Um, they could do a lot more from here, like I don't know, digitize stuff and anyway, get me an app. All those. Yeah, that would yeah, be and great. Any that like just a billion other things, but just as a general model. I, I just really appreciate this as a fantastic way to build a game because you don't need a single other thing. You literally don't need a single other it's thing. Also, you get your it's also, and, it's your, also, your, and your um, for, uh, fight, uh, forces of fantasy and uh, ravening hordes. Boom, you're 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 done. You don't need anything else. Yeah, it's a bit of a mic drop, right? Like you know, I think like in multiple ways. Whenever we see a new like, edition of Forty K, we just had one, and then we're going to see a new edition of Age of Sigmar in the future. You know, uh, whenever they go, you, you can't expect them to go through everything. And I'm like, well, I don't know why they make a why not? like they make a lot of money, like and yeah. like and with that money, they can buy a lot of resources to do this. Like it's very within the scope of possibility. Oh, the project is just simply too massive. And I'm like, no, well, no, but they chose everyone, to. They everyone cho is excited at the exact same time. Like yeah. this is the thing that like, people say. Oh, that doesn't make economic sense. Now, what are you talking about? Everyone who is likes this game or is interested in this game and had their faction and had their dudes, everyone has something to be excited about right now. And they don't have to feel like they, you know, have a second class army or something like that because the codex is dropping. So yeah, like, yeah. Like you, the you're idea super that right. this is a bad idea business wise has never rang true to me. I've never understood it. Um, because you could still release new models. There's no reason why plastic grill nights can't happen. You know, I don't even. I like don't even count. mean from the right. from the perspective of like Games Workshop. I'm I'm talking about the perspective from like the community. Like like you okay, know, sorry. You, you know, no, no, it's okay. Like it's a fair point you made as well. Like, I just mean that like, you know, the, they could never possibly do it. And then we just watched <laughs> one man 
Yeah, like Just yeah, a one man <laughs> to rule them all, and probably there's more than one person involved in sure, this project, yeah. obviously. But I think predominantly we're looking at the labour of a singular person um, mm -hmm. reinventing. You know, and and several of these things are very similar. Like you know, mm -hmm. we're not seeing we're seeing an an improvement upon, and he's had loads of great resources to go to. WAP is a good example. Uh, you know, uh, all those other things, as you've pointed out a lot through through the past year. So there's been some good examples, but I think it really does kind of like uh, benchmark what SDS is about. And they did the same thing with Blood Bowl as well. You know, they were like, here's Blood Bowl, here's a bunch of stuff on Blood Bowl. We're bringing out more Blood Bowl stuff. Um, you know, and if you go to a Warhammer tour like, sorry, a Blood Bowl tournament now, what they never did was like, right, get everything else out of the hobby. They were very supportive. A Blood Bowl tournament, even nowadays, obviously not one at Warhammer World, but other than that, and I live in Nottingham, so I'm the only person probably affected by this out of most people listening, <laughs> is, um, you know, it's probably like 40% 3D printed or third party stuff from other, you know, table, like the, the boards are from other people, the dice are from other people. Um, and I think, uh, if anything, it's a bit of a love letter to be like, to the community to just be like, there you go, there's a full game, off you go. Guess what? I've just also added Vagabonds in uh, Bretonia. And you're like, it's pretty nice, actually. So I agree That's with you. Cool. Yeah, I agree and, with you. And also, full circle, they ended it all at the same time, and now they're bringing it all back together at the same time. Look at that. That's it's beautiful. Cute. That's cute. All I right, do Rob, I love, I love you, cyclical. You played coy with me. <laughs> What's your number one? So my number one, the thing I'm most excited about, I think, for the old world, uh, is going to have to be, and it's lame, you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna think this is very lame, but it's the friends. <laughs> the new opportunity to make friends via the community. I'd like to talk about this. I I, I you know this already, you know this story, but I the got in the bingo card was at risk of not getting filled out if you didn't say the community at some point. Yeah. In five things I like about Warhammer. So that's good. So good. it's your backstory. I hit the no, it's just that I entered in uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle and I only just a couple of years into the like the tournament community or the event community as I like to call it sometimes before the end times happened. And then since then I've had like I've had a like um, a, a major like a part of my life has been the event community, but obviously through Age Sigma, 40k, Heresy, yeah. uh, all games that I play paid a lot. Uh, now obviously I've got the venue in Nottingham that I run. All really exciting. We've already got a square base GT that's sold out. I'm gonna put a second one on sale. These are all things nice. that's these are all things that are super exciting. Um, but some people don't like the games that I like. Like, and that's really, really okay. Like, I know some absolutely phenomenal people who play, as an example, right now, even with a couple of 40K armies here, like, I like doing terrain 40K, even running 40K events. I just don't want to play 40K. Yeah. And so if I wasn't running events or, you know, I wouldn't have a great opportunity to meet these people and hang out with these people. And just like you said, meeting people has been like a cornerstone of why events uh, and, and Warhammer, event Warhammer is Warhammer to me. And yeah. it's one of those, you know, uh, quintessential things. And so this gives me a new opportunity to meet people who are like, I never want to play the games you play, Rob, but I will play this game, which sure, is fun. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, also great dragging people from other games into this one. I've been having some success too. So there's that as well. Just poisoning people's minds with with a new obsession is also a lot of fun. Yeah, I think, I think one of the things that, uh, like, we've seen online a little bit is a bit of criticism, like a bit of mudslinging between different communities, uh, specifically like, oh, this will destroy that, or, um, you know, specifically, let's just not beat around the bush, Age of Sigmar, or, you know, Age of yeah. Sigmar, like, um, they're different beasts as games, but importantly, uh, yeah. both games that are, are very viable, different set, different settings as well, and yes. mirror mirror like sister settings, like you know uh, the the characters that we see in uh, in old world or some of them, uh, you know, still making it into Age of Sigmar, so that's fun as well. But I definitely as, as an as a non Age of Sigmar guy too, I would I would speak almost to the contrary. Having this piece back kind of I think gives AOS its legs. You know, because it, it has you, you now have the continu you now have the continuity and the that foundation like setting wise as to where AO, AOS kind of comes from and um, you know what those things are that I'd really love in just superficially looking at the design of AOS like the callbacks that they make in it to things that have come before and so I don't know I just love that there is now a complete through line and that the uh, you know um, the chicken and the egg both exist it's great. Yeah, it's really cool. I think that's really cool. But yeah, so the uh, the opportunity to to you know to 
like a be a part of a community which is great that's mm -hmm. the whole making new friends and then also the opportunity to like develop a community as well because one of the things yes. that i'm really proud of in the age sigma community is i've worked really hard inside my space to make something that's inclusive that's really important to me uh something that is data driven so stats and other information like that is really valuable as well but never mm -hmm. losing sight of the 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 law or the the you know the miniatures or the game i think like the HCMI community or at least the the tournament community that i play with uh that like and we, you know we kind of talked about this offline several times mm -hmm. but they are not these like just min maxing monsters this is sort of like and you know and the community and also how you play games has developed very very rapidly over the you know six to eight years and so yeah. it's really good that also i'm going to get to bring some of that to another community and you know um yes because there's going to be some uh, holdouts, I guess. There's going to be some like community leaders, I imagine, just like there was at the beginning of Age of Sigma, where they were like, "Yeah, do you know what? Got you in people. That's fine." And you're like, "No, no." <laughs> it's like, like there, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of like old Japanese soldiers, uh, soldiers <laughs> living in the jungles, <laughs> thinking the war is still going on. You know, like, and 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 that's and that's actually great. I think one of the things it's weird technology exists in, in many different ways and there's such thing as uh, like humans being able to be social animals and have rules of, of decorum and how you do things with each other that's a form of technology and i think we have invented a lot of tech around how you approach playing tabletop games since this uh, since this game ended and um i think what's exciting is being able to share that with people so that they can realize that it's not such a patent like, like it's it doesn't have to be an awful experience or anything to be afraid of at all it's a really lot of fun to go to tournaments um especially if you got if, if you have some approaches on how to how to how to do it right how to do it in a constructive way in a, in a collaborative way and uh, i know both you and i are on uh, very at very at least very similar pages on on just how amazing events are i mean there's just no way around it like my closest friends have become people around the world who i've met through warhammer events and like that's an amazing thing. And so I, I, I want more people to have more friends, much like our friend um, uh, Zuckerberg. Um, <laughs> you know, he just wants everyone to be friends. <laughs> Same with us. We're just like Mark. I would I no I want to be a uh, I want to be the guy from um, uh, MySpace. Like I just like I was I just want you to join Old World and and I'm your first friend. And you're like, oh, <laughs> all right, guy. that's nice. Hey. Hey, like, oh, so yeah, so that's, that's a fun thing for me. A new game or like a, you know, a, a, a revitalized game means a new opportunity to interact with new people. And also yeah. to like, because I didn't just happen to be like, I know all of the answers to how communities develop better. Like it's been a learned process for me over years. Um, and so like, I will get to learn even more from a different community as well, which makes me like, hopefully like a, a smarter person and a, a more well-informed person. Um, and also yeah. just the opportunity for more fun. Like when you play someone who's fun, the perfect experience. Great. You meet, meet more humans. And I would say also to not come at this like uh, as as people are coming to the table with all the answers. Fantasy and the and the organized uh, scene and the event scene of warmer fantasy. I've only ever read it as an artifact, but they they had a lot of stuff going on um, that you know I think we still don't have today. Um, and so I think there's lots of organizers who went on and did other things in the interim who, who knows, maybe we'll see, um, uh, people from those communities who've gone off and like learned from other areas, other games, other approaches to, to how you do things. And maybe they come back to the table and, and are, are excited too, to, to play a game that they used to love a lot. So yeah, the goal. bringing, it's, it's yeah. really cool bringing, bringing, cause right now it's, everyone who's going to do this is going to be people who like are jazzed to do it. Like this, like, again, that, if, that, that feeling of being compelled look at when a new edition of something comes out like 40k or or, or AOS or whatever ah oh, geez like now i have to fill in the blank if it ever gets there by the way get a different hobby but um you know like there is no compulsion to do this it is just it is just being released into the world people who are going to come to the table immediately i hope are people who are just so pumped that it's here you know and and that's what like that's how what i felt like at the square base gt it wasn't even here yet that was in the beginning of uh, november sorry end of november and those, those those people were just so excited to just have an excuse to play this game that they hadn't touched in eight years, mm. and uh, now there's an even now there's a, a, a probably you could say better version of that coming to the table. So hopefully everyone who's coming is just going to be pumped about it.
Yeah, I agree. I think the goal has to be Blood Bowl. I think Blood Bowl is the, like, what happened at the end of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, like, and I think maybe, like, to kind of conclude, like, would end at the be the end? I don't know. Like, That's what happened at the end of Warhammer Fantasy Battle is the community did fracture, and while yeah. there were many great projects, Ninth Age, WAP, everything else, mm -hmm. that kind of progressed, and people just played old editions, the community did... Mm -hmm you know, move on into their own little spaces. But when Blood Bowl yeah. ended, Blood Bowl were like, what if we're just the biggest game in the world? Like, they just like, they, they like, they, <laughs> just like, let me just keep doing, you guys like this? You want to just keep, you want to just keep doing this? Just keep doing this, uh, make this like bigger? Uh, yeah. Like, and you know, you had more teams and everything else. So when Games Workshop did come around to doing Blood Bowl again, um, they had this, this already existing kind of like community, and this is not say like let's develop a community so Games Workshop can co-opt it, not at all. I more mean that the whims of fate, like I, I really do feel like there's so many reasons about the destruction of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, but we can just yeah. be like, eventually someone on a whim was like, no, get rid of it. Like there was yes. a load of other factors, mm -hmm. but you know, and so I l would like something that I've invested time, energy and love into and other people have to... Yeah finally develop like a uh, a core that is so stringently positive and strong that no matter what gets thrown at it it gets it survives i think that would be a healthy thing i think that would be good and i think it's already there probably but it, it you know what i would have to say that it, it probably is already there and and i think that was actually like um you experienced this in the in the development and growth of aos and how the community had to rally around that game and find a way to play it because it, you know, was an interesting idea when it first arrived, um, and I felt I feel very strongly about. I don't think I get into 40k like I did if I didn't start playing Seventh Edition, which was an unsupported, broken edition that didn't work unless the community fixed it. And the community, you know, and by that I mean made it, made patched it enough that it could be played. You had to answer questions that were unanswerable, mm. and tournaments existed through sheer will of uh, the participants and the organizers because it was not a game that was fit for purpose at all. And 8th edition, when it launches, when it relaunches, um, so basically, you know, a, a, a reboot, much like we're experiencing here with Old World, um, it is not anywhere near fit for purpose either. Um, it's, it's a very incomplete game, but the difference uh, there was, like, it was so exciting and people were so happy to see at least some progress that everyone came to the, everyone was at the table. You know, tournaments were just everyone wanted to play, and I really hope that's what's going to happen here because we're gonna we're gonna crack this thing open, guys, and there's gonna be some busted shit. There's gonna be things that's like, how is this in the game? That's gonna <laughs> happen. That's gonna happen. Maybe a lot. More than likely. Probably not as lot, and not probably not as much in my reading of it so far as we've seen with some other games. But but there's gonna be just stuff like, why don't I get you down? Because if they don't fix it, we can. And that's. That's what it's all about. Just be excited to play this game because this is just where we're starting and it's going to go from here. I think that's a great point. That's a great place to end the show because I think um, I think that's a, a, a key conversation I'd like to have over the next few weeks and months is that the game has just launched. You are going to have a lot of geniuses on the internet who professionally review games uh, and also a lot of geniuses on the internet, I use the term ironically, uh, who also wow. will uh, will understand from the very moment of get-go how the game will work. No, uh, what I mean to say is, though, is take your time. If you're excited, find the space for people who are excited about what it is. And it, like Valor said, there very may well be stuff that's very, very problematic. However... Yeah that fear or that boogeyman will probably not exist in your local community. It's really simple. Me and my friend play, and I know that there is something that's a huge problem. I don't know what it might be. The same way watches. I don't know why. I'm just picking them for no reason. For instance. Yeah, for instance. Yeah, and then and my friend's like, hey, man, do you want to play a game? I'm like, guess what I'm not going to do? Bring a bunch of Way Watchers because... I don't need to. It's my friend. <laughs> how, to, how to play Warhammer uh, and... Uh... How to, how to win Warhammer friends and influence people, I think, is definitely an, a, a show that or, or a video that I want to I want to put up because I, I think there's so many different ways to approach a game that's in that state. There's also two guys who or two gals who like to go to uh, tournaments, showing up and just running all the wackiest stuff that they think might be the thing that gives them the edge, the biggest skew, and that can be fun too. And a lot of people do enjoy doing that. Mm. Um, so let's not in these early goings. Let's not kink shame, guys. Let's make sure that we're all playing this game in the way that you're excited to play it 
and don't let's not be mad at others for you're going to see people breaking it you're going to see people putting up lists that are wild uh we'll we'll be talking about them you're going to see people putting up lists that are just their guys and it and clearly it's not going to win anything and you're going to want to be like that's a dumb list let's just try not to like yuck people's yum let's just try to like all get comfortable in these rules see see where they take us i'm i'm always someone who's going to be very perspective uh pres- um, offer uh solutions very fast and as rob will try and got like usually tries to put this brakes on me in the sense that you know sometimes we do need to see what happens before we can we can try and uh do anything about what may or may not be coming so anyway that is all to say everyone just enjoy yourselves okay uh, I think Rob's number one point that it's about the community is like so good and there's so much here to like. I think there's very little to be upset about here. Let's all have a great time. Uh, I hope you do share in the comments uh, what what some of your favorite things you've heard about today, probably on some other shows. I know a lot of other shows are probably a lot more nitty gritty. We're going to do that, guys. We're going to do so much of that. I don't know. Um, no, like, I'm being serious. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know how, like, we have been, oh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't agree. I don't think. I think there will be. Look, there are definitely going to be man read book shows out there. Oh, there will be man read book shows. We didn't just read the book, is what I'm saying. We didn't offer a lot of analysis. This is a hot take video. We are going to spend. This is an incredibly dense set of rules. Again, that's what I mean. Factions, 250 pages of core rules. Um, two uh, arcane journals, aka the army books and the supplements. There is a ton of stuff to explore and have fun with here. Uh, and like we cannot wait to get into some more extreme detail with you. So um, thanks for all of the support and like watching this video and go read some man read book channels. Get in that pre order queue. Uh, it's gonna be a blast. Yeah, and if you do like the show, uh, comments, like, subscribe, share with your friends, uh, and then of course there's you can always support us on the Patreon. Thanks to everyone on Patreon who does so. Uh, Squarebase, we do have a little Discord, and that Discord I would like to think. Um, is constructive. I don't like the term positive sometimes because positive, like toxic positivity is as bad as toxic negativity. I like the term constructive. I, I like communities yeah. that are constructive. Uh, and so I think that they're full of really good, really constructive conversations, which are positive uh, and because they work towards like solutions, right? Which is good. So if you want to join that, that's a, a fun little group, I'd say, uh, an FLG. And, and also, by the way, like just on the uh, interacting with others out there, because again, I feel like there's going to be lots of there's going to be lots of conversation. Um, I have been out in the Facebook trenches uh, a lot in the last year. The worst place. Um, <laughs> but honestly, I can't tell. Like sometimes I'm not in the mood and I don't do a de-escalatory thing. But I can't tell you how many times I have uh, arrived at incredibly common ground on a on a take that I haven't liked by just asking that person more questions about why they think that way. And a lot of the times I've found that both of us are dissatisfied and really, again, what, what we disagree on maybe is the solution or the, the prescription or for, for that thing. Um, and uh, there's a lot of common ground out there, guys. Like everyone is probably, hopefully, excited for Warhammer. Um, and if they're not, they've got a billion other editions they can go play. Who cares? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Go enjoy yourselves. People who don't like this, that's fine. You don't want to give it a try. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, That's the the best answer. Like, it's fine. Like, like, and and that's important too. All right, listen, thank you very much for listening to the show. Thank you to Mr. Val Heffelfinger. I've been one of your hosts, Rob. uh, And it's been a real fun time. Thanks everyone much. Thanks everyone much. Thanks to everyone. Don't forget from, don't forget from the four corners of the world to this show. Oh no. How do I end it? We still haven't got a good end. Square based. Square bass. Hashtag square bass. Square bass.